Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I'm working on the pallet board Martin House and I want to get it all finished up but I can only do so much a day because I got other things that I have to do. Now you can see that these two sideboards are curved. They're what's called native wood. They're cut wet and then they're just nailed into place without going through a kiln or long-term drying process because it's just rough lumber doing rough work. This is pallet wood. So pallets don't have to be anything other than just structurally there. But because this side is cupped this way and this side is cupped this way I need to end up with a c-shaped piece of wood. Now I'm close I just got to take a little bit more off of this corner and for that I'm the 151 is a spoke shave made by Stanley. Big thing I like about a 151 says number 151 right there so you know what it is. Also, it has these little adjusting screws and the adjusting screws go into slots in the top of the blade. And as the blade wears and you sharpen it, you adjust them down further. Now I got about a quarter inch left on the blade which is quite a bit actually considering how little I use this tool. But the nice thing is these screws let me adjust the blade back and forth. On the standard style, style of spoke shave, you loosen a set screw, a locking screw, and you tap the blade back and forth. That means you're either trying to push this sharpened edge, or you're trying to tap this so that it comes out a little further. This lets me adjust it right within a thousandth of an inch easily. And at a thousandth of an inch, I can cut shavings off end grain even on this native oak wood, which doesn't like getting cut at all. Ingrains, no problem. Now the spoke shave will cut straight across, but for me, it works best going at an angle. It lets it slice. See how we got it.
Well, that doesn't happen very often, but it hit it exactly where I wanted it. Five and a quarter. Now since this wood is a half inch thick and I want to drill through this into that floorboard for the upper story on the birdhouse, I'm going to go five and a half and I'll put it right on center line on that board. This tool which does one thing exceedingly well. It's a little brad nailer and it punches a cut nail through pretty much anything. It's electric, works quite easily. The thing that makes it the best tool for this job, five and a quarter, five and a half, five and a half, Yep, we're right where I want to be. These cut nails have a square point on them. They don't have a sharp point. They, they don't have a pointed point. They have a blunt point. It's just a, a bar of square cut nails with kind of a chisel point on it. And it'll just punch straight through and it won't split. It's going so fast that it just goes right on through. If I was to try and put brad nails in here, you know, the, the wire nails with the points on them, what would happen is that round pointed tip would expand the wood and it would crack. But this little guy just goes pop. Right on through. No splits, no cracks. Does a great job. I bought this so that I could repair wooden crates. And it did it perfectly because the wooden crates were the same kind of wood. Hard as the day is long, and if you tried to do anything with them, other than just gently hold them together, the wood split. So I would take some Tight Bond 2 glue and put it on the, the slats that were broken 
Then I would take that nail gun, which is a Craftsman Industrial, Sears Craftsman Industrial Electric Brad Nailer. Great thing to have. Now you can use a pneumatic one. Pneumatics work just fine. Then. They're okay, but the electric one means that I can do it pretty much anywhere I want. Doesn't matter where it is. I can run an extension cord, I can run a generator, I can do anything I want. And I don't have to drag a big heavy hose, I've got an extension cord, which is not easy, but it works. And now I have the upper story all attached. What do I do next? Oh, this. This is the floor of the lower story. And I set this up to put screws in it. I could nail it, but then I'd never be able to get that board out without cutting the nail somehow or pulling them, which is not a good thing. I don't want to do that. I want to put three screws in. One here, one there, one there. That'll hold this side where I want it. I'm going to attach the base with these brass screws. That way they won't corrode and they'll be able to go in and out if I have to clean. Well, I know I'll have to clean it. I have to clean this at least once a year in the spring. I have to remove the old nest so that the birds will go in and use it. So I'm going to take this small drill bit and run a pilot hole. because brass screws are soft. They're more than strong enough to hold the weight of the birdhouse. And by putting some wax on the threads, I can run the screw down in without any trouble at all. Looks like I got some wood down in there. There. Now just run these screws down in. That's not good. Screws long enough to go down in there. Why didn't it go?
There, I caught it. Nice. If you have any suggestions for new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or the legal guardians of the underage person. Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.